Well, you guys got another video here for you about Windows 10 end of life and some of the options you might have, some of the risks that you might have if you continue to use Windows 10. And we're going to just go through some of your options available and what can happen after Windows 10 ends. So let's go through what is probably a really important step for a lot of people because millions and millions of people have PCs that are just old and not compatible for Windows 10 for a lot of different reasons because Microsoft have put in some strict hardware requirements for Windows 11. And this means that millions of computers are going to be literally e-waste unless there's other alternatives available to those people. And that's what we'll also go through in this video. So if you're one of those people that have a computer that is not on the supported list for upgrading to Windows 11 for free, then this video will be useful for you because I will give you some information that will probably help you understand some of the options that you have available. So let's talk about first how popular Windows 10 is against Windows 11. Now, lots of people never upgraded to Windows 11. They've just stuck with Windows 10. And this is because people are creatures of habit. They just prefer to stick with something they know. But if we look at the stat counter here, you can see now Windows 10 still holds a massive market share over Windows 11. But it is steadily going into decline and Windows 11 is now starting to climb. Why is this all of a sudden happening? It's because companies are now starting to roll out Windows 11 on their systems if they can. And also some people are starting to try Windows 11. Now there's still a way to go before end of life. October 14th, 2025 is the end day, end of life for Windows 10 as we know it. After that, you will stop to receive any sort of feature updates or security updates uh, for that operating system. At the end of the day, it's end of life and it will not receive any more support from Microsoft. What does that mean for you? Well, let's first talk about security. Windows is constantly being attacked. There is also times where companies, security companies will find major vulnerabilities inside that operating system. They are then notifying Microsoft and then Microsoft then will release a patch for those particular vulnerabilities on that system. As you can see here, there is absolutely hundreds, if not thousands of vulnerabilities that have already been patched. Now, once Windows 10 reaches end of life, all security updates stop. Uh, new vulnerabilities stay unpatched, leaving your computer open to attack. Now, without security updates or any sort of updates, it's like leaving your front door unlocked and open all the time, like you see right here. You wouldn't do that in your house, so why would you do that on your computer? So for those people that say, I'll just continue using the operating system without security updates, that is a massive risk that you are taking every single day, especially if the computer is online all the time and you're using your computer on a daily basis for general tasks like banking and other sensitive information that you should not be doing on a computer that has not been uh, updated or had security patches in a very long time. This will allow hackers to gain access to your information and your computer. Now, let's move on to software. This is another big issue. When Windows 10 reaches end of life, software developers will start to end support for the software for that operating system. Companies are not going to keep up updating programs for unsupported operating systems. This makes older outdated software vulnerable and open to attack. And you can even get hit by ransomware and other nasty infections if your software is not kept up to date. This includes browsers and also antivirus software. Now, Microsoft have already released a end of life extended security update program, which you can purchase for $30 for one year. This will give you extra updates for one year. This is the first time Microsoft have done this for home users. So if you want to continue to use Windows 10 after the end of life date, then it's advisable that you pay this $30 to receive 
uh, further security updates to their operating system for one more year. This could be extended further. Now, there's also third-party companies that are offering updates uh, for that software, which is that operating system called Zero Patch. And again, this is another paid service. It doesn't work like Windows 10 updates. These updates are not at the kernel level. These are at the user level, which is uh, what these updates are for. So let's talk about hardware. Microsoft wants everyone to upgrade to Windows 11, but not all hardware is compatible of running Windows 11 due to the strict system requirements set by Microsoft. You do have four choices and I'll go through them here. Either continue running Windows 10 on unsupported hardware offline, that means you're not connected to the internet. If you choose to run that PC online, and you do so and you do tasks like banking and other sensitive tasks, this can cause a major security risk. And you have to understand there is a big risk. Option two is to buy a new computer uh, that is compatible of running Windows 11 or upgrade your old PC if possible to accept Windows 11 upgrade. Next is pay for extended support, which we've already talked about which is $430 for one year to give you an extra one year longer after 14th of October 2025 or pay for third party extended support with zero patch. Now your fourth and final option really is to stop the PC from entering the e-waste. Now e-waste is a big problem. There's going to be millions and millions and millions of computers probably ending up just like this in e-waste and these are still serviceable computers that will work so what is the option for you that you can use rather than putting them into e-waste like this the option is is to use another operating system like linux now linux mint is a completely different operating system to windows a lot of people uh, are frightened of linux because of the unknown but it is quite easy to use linux and also it will give that old computer a new lease of life and you'll be able to use the computer for many years to come. It's open source software run by the community. It's free to download. You don't have to pay anything and it can give your old computer a new lease of life. It has very low system requirements, which means your old computer should run perfectly fine on Linux Mint. So in my opinion, if you're looking for another operating system to keep your PC going, then something like Linux Mint is a great starting point for people to get used to Linux. So if you're going to be just using your computer to surf the web or watch YouTube videos, uh, do a bit of light gaming and stuff like that, then Linux Mint is going to be perfectly fine. But what about those AAA listed first person shooter gamers out there that really want to play games, but they can't? on Linux and there's always going to be that debate and argument about it doesn't do this and it doesn't do that. There is solutions around that problem but they're not perfect but they do work. And one of the options available to you for games like Fortnite and other games that are restricted on Linux due to the actual anti-cheat is GeForce Now. A lot of Linux uh, users will tell you this is an option for gaming. Unfortunately, you will need to pay for this option if you want a good experience. Let's go to the Go Unlimited here. What this is actually doing is you're basically renting a gaming uh, machine and it's streaming down, as you can see here. So once it loads up, you'll be playing on one of their systems here. This is nothing new. This has been going on for a long time. But this is the free option on a basic rig. You're going to get ads supported on it and you only get an hour's gaming time on this system, on the free one. This is not really an option for uh, for real gamers, in my personal opinion. But if you're looking for something that wants to play Fortnite, I would say at least the middle option. And that's $9.99 a month is ad free and you'll get six hours of gaming time. Let's take a look at some of the options in more detail to give you an idea of what this actually is. So no ads on the middle one. Uh, it is uh, 1440p, whereas the free one is 1080p. 
you get up to 60 fps here on the free version and you will get up to 60 fps on this version here uh, which is 1440p now you might be saying i might as well go for the free option but you're getting six hours of game time here also you don't get an rtx graphics card on the free version you do on the middle version here and there's a bunch of other stuff like it supports ultra wide monitors and and other settings here which are not supported on the free version uh, if you really want a real high-end system you want to go for the ultimate version which is a 4080 graphics card that you're renting basically you're also getting 16 cores uh, no ads and also you can see here the shortest time waiting for queue times and you're also going to get eight hours of game time up to 4k and up to 240 fps and you're going to get all these options on which is to do with dlss uh, frame generation and all that sort of good stuff remember this is obviously streaming so you're going to need a really good internet connection as well if you are looking for this option to play games like fortnite and games like that which are restricted on uh, linux in general due to the anti-cheat it doesn't play well with linux this is for really people that want to play games on linux uh, uh, but they but they can't install them because they won't work and they still want to use that system now some games will work on linux and if that does then you don't need to use the geforce now you can use the actual pc itself with Linux installed on it and it should be able to play those games. Another option is to dual boot uh, Windows 10 and you'll be able to then load up your games. But remember, if you're running a system with no supports or patches on it, then that is a bit of a risk, but it might be something that you might want to consider. So let's move on to what else is available to you in Linux. Well, you've got all your software, which is free right here as well. You're going to get long-term support, which means long-term updates and security patches. They're going to be long-term on this system. So you could theoretically use that until the computer uh, dies, basically. Now, granted, Linux might not be for everyone. Not everyone might want to jump ship to Linux, and that's okay. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's an option, and I wanted to cover this option for you so you understand these are your options available. There's no privacy concerns on here. There's no de-bloating or any of that stuff. You don't have to do any of that with Linux. Uh, malware and other viruses and ransomware. There is malware and nasty files out there on the internet that do infect Linux. It's very rare, but there is some out there. And again, like I said before, when you've got a piece of pie the size of Microsoft's Windows that's the that is the one they're going after they're not really going after linux it's not to say they can't uh, but it would be much more difficult to infect uh, uh linux compared to windows but it's not impossible but as it stands of today there isn't as many uh issues with malware compared to windows now you may be saying why am i being so nice to linux and that's because i don't care what operating system you use Unlike a lot of people that come on my channel and attack me, uh, normally, generally, Linux users don't understand why they're so obsessed with this. I really don't care. It doesn't bother me. I work with all operating systems, and my job is to make how-to videos on how to do things, not to tell you to do things. It's your choice on what you use and what you install on your system. I think someone was arguing about me making videos at doing de-bloating videos, being a hypocrite. I don't tell people to de-bloat Windows. I just make videos showing people how to de-bloat Windows. They can choose whether they want to do it or not. I would advise people to use Group Policy Editor. As I've always said, it's reversible and it's built into Windows. Anyway, I'm not going to get into any of that stuff. I've got far too much stuff on my plate other than worrying about all of that drama that goes on YouTube. Anyway, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.